Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. I'm here with Dr. Alan Moses, who's a general dentist, practices in the Sears Tower, now the Willis Tower, and he's also a sleep specialist and an entrepreneur inventor. Dr. Moses, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about who the Moses Sleep Appliance is for. Well, the Moses Sleep Appliance are people who have diagnosed apnea and who snore, and uh, it works quite well. Now, why would someone with sleep apnea or snoring need one of these appliances? Well, there's alternatives to the treatment. One of the alternatives is surgery. That's very painful. As CPAP is continuous positive air pressure. That's a device that people wear on their face. And a lot of people do very, very well, and it works. It's a very good device, but a lot of people have difficulty tolerating that device. And so the um, oral appliance is an alternative to CPAP and surgery, and it gets good results. People are very pleased, and it's quite, they're usually more, way more comfortable than the alternatives. Right, what, what does an oral appliance, oral sleep appliance do, the Moses, what does it do? Okay, oral sleep appliance is very simple. They make more room for the tongue and dilate the airway. Okay. The more room you create in the mouth of the tongue, the least likely it is, the less likely it is to collapse on the airway. Right. Apnea, and that's really the cause of obstructive sleep apnea, is that tongue? Apnea happens in two ways. Okay. One is the tongue collapses on the airway in sleep. When we have REM sleep, we have a virtual atonia, everything is flaccid, the tongue could collapse on the airway. The other thing that happens is when you sniff in, if your nose doesn't deliver as much air as the diaphragm can, is demanding, then you create a negative pressure. And that negative pressure in the airway can suck the airway shut. Right. So usually it's neither one or the other. It's a combination of both. Okay. And so uh, oral appliances work better when you have a nice open nasal airway right. so that there's less airway pressure. Once you have to open the mouth to breathe, they get some results on some people, but it's not as effective. Mm -hmm. The idea is to have a nose that works as well. Okay. Uh, now... Why is the Moses, how does it compare to other sleep appliances out there, mandibular advancement devices? I know there's probably a hundred or more types out there. Why is the Moses better? Dilates the airway and it makes more room for the tongue. There's nothing in the roof of the mouth. It's just a little teeny plastic retainer in the upper. The tongue needs to be in the roof of the mouth. When the tongue is far, as far forward as it can get in the mouth, when the tongue is in the roof of the mouth, we have the largest possible airway. That's what you want, is the largest airway to get the most air in. Right. And so we can create that situation. Okay. Uh, also, it allows you to have your lips together. And Very important. Yeah. Nose breathing is better. Right. Okay. Well, where would people get one of these Moses appliances? They're custom From, made. They're custom made, but you have to go to your dentist and he, uh, you, or have a diagnosis of uh, apnea, go to your dentist and Tell them you want one. That's all. They're the best. You heard that from Dr. Moses himself. Okay, great. Where would we get more information about the Moses Appliance? Well, I have a website that's very okay. informative, www.apnea-snoring.com. www.apnea-snoring.com. Yes. We also have a great informative website because, let me tell you something else, children get this. Yeah, absolutely. And so children are not just small adults. That's a whole no. different avenue. And this, I do have a website that's informational, which I'm very pleased with. Great. It's ap, uh, kidsapnea.com. Kidsapnea.com. Yes. Wonderful. Now, Dr. Moses, what should dentists and their staff know about sleep apnea and the Moses appliance? Well, they should know that there's a lot of comorbidities, and that it relates to a lot of other diseases, that there's uh, at least 10 other specialties that should be referring and thinking about this because there's a lot of symptoms that, that we don't know relate to sleep apnea. Treating, uh, these, treating the sleep apnea makes a lot of other things better. Diabetes, depression, these patients have a lot of complex things going on that are not just about breathing. There's a lot to this. Heart. The subject of apnea is called apnea, but it's way more involved than just the apnea itself. Right, right. It, it, oxy less oxygen to your cardiovascular system, wherever your blood goes, it, sleep apnea affects that. Your brain, your muscles, your heart, 
Dr. Gozell, Dr. Gozell at the University of Chicago says that sleep apnea is an oxidative stress disease. Okay. And I think he's right. The more we relate it to oxidative stress, the more we understand the complexities and comorbidities that are associated with it. We've had uh, a lot of these out there now. We've been, it's been available for about four or five years, yeah. and it's durable, and uh, it, it, it works quite well. We've had you can take a drink of water with this in at night, and you can talk with this in. Right, right. We've had many patients, so many patients, that have just had great results, both from snoring and from sleep apnea with the Moses appliance. Thank you. You're the good testimony, <laughs> Okay, well, great. Dr. Moses, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.